Hi, everybody. So I wanted to take this opportunity to do something um, not directly related to the material in the course, but that I think you might find helpful that's worth learning about. And it's a way, it's the way that professional scientists and mathematicians write mathematics, and actually a lot of other fields too, economists, lots of people use this system. Uh, because it produces, it's a, it's a typesetting system that produces super high quality output suitable for publication. Many publishers will take a file written in this system, put it directly into their printers, and the book comes out just printed the way you would have written it. So it's great for math because it has very powerful capabilities for math, but it's actually really nice even if you're just going to write um, an English paper because you're going to get quality typesetting uh, as, if, as if you were writing a book, and it, it looks really impressive. So the, the technique where this is a, I mean, the system's called LaTeX or Tech. LaTeX is an add-on to Tech, and it goes back, it was originally written by a very, very famous um, computer scientist named Donald Knuth. He's still alive. He's in his 90s, and he, he this is free software. Um, and it used to be a little complicated to get started with Tech because you had to install the, the language on your, your computer, and then you had to have a text editor to work with it. If your computer... If you, if you get that sort of stuff, then you could install tech on your own computer and work with it there. But now we have this great cloud-based tech editor called Overleaf. And that's what I'm going to recommend that you use. And there is a link on the course homepage to Overleaf, and it will take you to this homepage for the Overleaf system. And what you have to do when you get there is to register by giving your email and a, and a password. I um, have already done that. So I'm going to go straight to logging in. And uh, when you first log in, you may see something slightly different. It may say, check out our help or whatever. But what you want to do is to um, go to the project's website. And that brings you to this kind of blank uh, file manager. And what we're going to do is we're going to start a new project. And let's say we want to do our homework assignments. You notice the other types of things that are here. We want to do homework assignments. And what it's going to give us is sort of a template for doing lots of different homework assignments. And I looked through this earlier. And the one that I can, I mean, you can pick whichever one you like. And you notice that it's in all sorts of different languages, including Hebrew. Um, but I um, I wanted to pick this one here. This is the somebody, some professor's homework template for a course. Uh, and it's a very simple template. So what I'm going to do is find this MAT 108 Spring 2018 homework template and select it. And I'm going to open it as a template. And that brings me to this picture. And what we're looking at here is on the left, we see the code in the tech computer language. And on the right, we see the document that is produced by that code. So um, a lot of this stuff if you're interested in it, you can study it and figure out what it does. But um, one of the advantages of using a template like this is if you read a little bit farther down, he says to make a problem. So what, what's going to happen is you're going to work on the left, and then the results are going to show up on the right. So he says, Math, Math 108, right here, your section, spring 2018, problem set number, first name, last name, month, month, slash, date, date. So let's do that, but let's change it to our um, our course. Let's put math 2710W, fall 2020, um, Jeremy, title bound. And this is um, 922. Now, I, I haven't done, oh, and then I was supposed to say problem set number one. So you notice the right hand side hasn't changed, but if I click the recompile button, um, then it creates my information shows up there. Uh, I'd rather those things were on separate lines. And as it happens, if you put backslash, backslash, that will force uh, these things to occur on different lines. And so 
Now uh, we have a nice sort of header for our document. This command, hrulefill, makes this horizontal line. And now you see it says begin problem, end problem, begin solution, end solution. So you can take it from there. It will automatically number the homework problems. So let's uh, take an example here. Uh, begin problem, prove that, well, let's do it this way. A Pythagorean triple is an element A, B, C, and I'll tell you what the meaning of these codes is in a minute, uh, of the set with the property that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So again, you notice that on the right-hand side, nothing has changed. So I click Recompile. And now I look at problem one. A Pythagorean triple is an element ABC of the set N3 with the property that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So a few things to notice. Notice the use of the dollar sign. When you put something between dollar signs, that means it's math. Um, and when you, so in this case, it, it maybe you don't see much of what it does, but in here, I've put the code for what's called blackboard bold of the um, letter N. Caret makes a um, superscript three. And again, I've put the math into um, math mode between dollar signs. Otherwise, these carrots, which make exponents, won't work. And my problem is actually going actually to be prove that such a triple exists. And now I can go down to solution and I can say observe that if ABC equals 3, 4, 5, then c squared equals 25 equals a squared plus b squared equals 9 plus 16. And again, we can click Recompile. And on our right-hand side, we get a nice print up of the solution. The new idea here is that I use two dollar signs. And two dollar signs is what's called display math. And that means that's what caused my equation here to be set off on a line by itself. Um, that's because I put it in double dollar signs instead of single dollar signs. If I put it in single dollar signs, then it just runs into the sentence. So um, I guess that's a matter of taste, but I like, I like it to be set off. And then we could say, thus, ABC is a Pythagorean triple. Now you might ask what happens if I leave off these dollar signs and just write ABC without the dollar signs. So let's look at that. And you'll notice that here, where I did use the dollar signs, the ABC are typeset in italics. That comes from here. Whereas here, where I didn't use the dollar signs, they're in Roman font. And the convention is that math symbols are typeset in italics. So you want to distinguish between uh, when you're using A as the letter A and when you're using A as a variable A, because when it's a variable A, you want it to be in italics. You may never have noticed this, but actually, this is, you see this all the time in, um, in printed mathematics. And okay, we could do a little bit more, but let's say this is, this is the end of my homework problem. So I'm not going to put in a second homework problem. I'm just going to be done. And you notice that it finishes with end document. So let me recompile it to get rid of problem two. All set. And now um, I would like to do something with this thing. Uh, right, I have got a nice file. By the way, 
if you look at the log files, it will tell you that there's an error in the use of this number here. I should have put a backslash there. So one of the problems with tech, of course, is that it is a programming language and it, it takes some uh, work to learn it. But if you look here, having done this, we can do download PDF. And if I go to my web browser, you see that I have nicely downloaded a PDF file, which is typeset in this beautiful way. So um, that's the, uh, the power of tech and of Overleaf. The price that you pay, as I mentioned, is there's a lot to learn. And um, the, um, the way to sort of get started is to take advantage of the help. So if you notice what I did here, I was in the project, which is it's in the cloud. So you could add more. I mean, I could come back to this and I can add more um, uh, material if I want. I hope I didn't cut off the. Uh, there. You can add more material uh, whenever you want. But if you want to get help, you can use this up arrow here. This will take you back to, you're allowed, you could have multiple files here for all your homework problems. And if you go to help, you'll see a lot of documentation. And the place you should start is here, creating your first document in LaTeX, paragraphs and new lines, bold italics and underlining, list, math, bibliography and references, images and tables. If you learn this much, you will uh, become enough of a tech master that you can probably uh, write anything you want. And if you look over on the left, there's learn LaTeX in 30 minutes. That might be um, another place to start and try to work through one of those things. So just to go back and show you a little bit more, because we this was kind of fancy, uh, kind of quick. Suppose that I had another problem here. Uh, and we wanted to use a few more interesting symbols, like we wanted to talk about an indexed set. So suppose that um, i is an in, i and j are index sets, where i is a subset of j. Um, is it always the case that and I'm going to use the display property here. Big cap A J J in J. So don't worry about this. Let's wait and see what it looks like, and then maybe you can figure out what it is that I typed. One of the best ways to learn tech is just to look at a lot of examples. So <clears throat> I, uh, if you look at my problem too, you see that this expression here, big cap J and J, A sub J, subset, big cap. What is that doing? Well, the big cap symbol is the upside down intersection symbol. This line with the, the, the lower line means subscript. J in J is J in J. A sub J, so that's how you make a subscript. And then you could have subset, and then the same thing with I. And maybe you think, well, what is this symbol? That's not the symbol we use. Well, if you we use this symbol, subset eek, and we maybe use it here too. And um, now we have the sim subset symbol that we use usually with the with the under under uh, the underline in it. So the goal of this uh, little video here is not to teach you LaTeX, but to show you that there is a thing called LaTeX which you could learn. And I would um, really encourage you, if you're interested, to go to the help in Overleaf and to try the Learn LaTeX in 30 Minutes 
which will take you some, through some very quick stuff, and then to review the uh, the LaTeX material for people that um, that don't know LaTeX. If you have any issues or you're stuck or you need help, I'm more than happy to consult with you during my office hours. The other thing that you can do if you want help, let me go back to my projects here, is you can share, this is a cloud system, you can share the document. And um, I happen to have an account on Overleaf, two accounts actually, under two different email addresses. So I'm gonna share my um, the thing I just did with myself. And um, you're allowed one collaborator if you don't want to, uh, to spend any money. And that's fine. And now what happens when I log in, I guess I have to log out here. And I can log in under my other identity. And you see it says, I'm being offered the chance to join this project. And if I join the project, then I can open it and I can make comments on it or talk to you about it. So if you needed some help, if you're stuck on something, uh, this would be a way if you could share your LaTeX document with me and then ask me what's going on here. I can't make something work or how do you do something or something like that. And um, if you do do that, you should email me just to make sure that I know to look. So um, if you're interested, uh, you can get in touch. Like I said, I'm happy to talk about this during office hours. And um, it's not mandatory, but I find that it is much easier to use than Microsoft Word. And of course, handwriting is kind of not an acceptable, and maybe I'll let you get away with it, but very quickly later in your academic career, uh, handwritten homework won't, or, or papers won't be accepted. So you need something. And if you're gonna learn something, you should learn tech. Okay, thanks.